Hello, my name is Hunter Wilson. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Today I will cover how to create an oblique shock over a wedge by using Fluent by ANSYS. As you can see here, I have already opened the workbench. I have already opened everything and I'll quickly go through it. So first we must start with our geometry. And here I have created a wedge given our specifications and created a geometry and surface around it in order to mesh and model it later in our process. So once the geometry is created, we can go to our mesh. And here, this was probably the most challenging thing in order to create a good mesh in order to properly analyze it in Fluent. So here I have used an automatic method using quadrilaterals and included a face mesh on this inner surface, this outer triangle, encompassing our wedge, and used a face sizing to decrease the size of the elements in this air region, because this is where our in, uh, interest lies, right around the wedge. So we also need to create our selections, uh, edge geometry. So all of the outside edges are our far field, and we must define our wedge as the edge. So from here, we can import it into Fluent. Here I have already set everything up. So we need to turn our energy equation on. We used the K omega, SST K omega for the viscosity for our supersonic uh, conditions. Air, we have treated as an ideal gas. In our boundary conditions, we did to make sure that our far field was labeled as a pressure inlet, where we established a Mach number of three for our simulation. Then we can come down to our initialization, and we used hybrid initialization. From there, we ran our calculation at 1,000 iterations. And for this simulation, this is a wedge with a 25 degree deflection angle at zero degree angle of attack. And for this one, we used solution steering uh, in order to assist the calculations in Fluent uh, to model what we were looking for as for the supersonic case and our oblique shock waves. So from here, we were able to create our contours after running the simulation. And from there, we can go to our results and find our streamlines. Here, our streamline is modeled after the velocity. And this process was re repeated for three more cases. We had a the same wedge shape, but now at a 25 degree angle of attack. And then we had a bigger wedge with a 40 degree deflection angle and also modeled it at a zero degree and 25 degree angle of attack. To show how I did a 25 degree angle of attack, I have another one pulled up here. Here's the workbench and I have everything pulled up already, so I'll quickly run through it. Here we have our geometry, and I modeled the 25 degree angle of attack by changing the angle of our wedge here to resemble a 25 degree angle of attack. We could also go into Fluent and change our flow direction to model the 25 degrees, but I chose to do it this way in the geometry. Here is my mesh. I found that a finer mesh was actually giving me issues when it was calculating. And so re uh, increasing the element size, although we have less elements altogether, this actually led me to have better results that made more sense. And here's an example. The calculation has already been run. For this one, I did not use the solution steering. It uh, created some difficulties and it wasn't able to converge, so I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, for this, I used the same cases, the SST K Omega with energy on, air is an ideal gas. Again, had to label our far field as a make sure it's a pressure far field at the same Mach number of three. Here's an example of one of the contours. This was my Mach number, and as you can see, there, even though this is deflected at a 25 degree angle of attack, it nicely resembles 
the oblique shock that we would see in this case. The difference between the 25 degree and 40 degree wedge was the 40 degree wedge actually had a detached shock, oblique shock, in front of it. And each case was modeled just about the same way. The mesh was the hardest part. Um, had to redo it multiple times in order to refine it and make sure the calculations would converge. Each one used a thousand iterations and that was it. Thank you for watching. In order to find our coefficient of lift and our drag coefficient for this wedge, we went to our report definitions, clicked on new, our force, drag, and in this window we can compute our drag coefficient. Now we have to remember to select this edge, click compute, and it lists it down here. This is how the drag coefficient was found for each case. And for the lift, we repeat the same thing, except clicking on the lift coefficient. Then we can compute it. All right, we have to click this edge, compute. And again, we have our case down here. We believe that due to the turbulence of this simulation, as well as potentially the how fine our mesh was may affect this value.